The tech generation may be the wave of the future, but millennials are still proving there's still value in a handwritten note. A survey of more than 2,000 American adults sought to uncover the relationship between handwritten notes, handwriting, and email in the digital age. The research, which was conducted by the handwriting service Bon, found that millennials believe that they have confidence in their handwriting overall at a clip of 33%. This is compared to only 17% of their counterparts 55 years and older. According to the survey, 81% of respondents say that they find a handwritten note more meaningful than a text or an email. With surprising results, with millennials leading the way. Rick Elmore spent more than three years in the NFL, but as so many, he knew that his football playing days couldn't last forever, and he also had a nostalgic feeling when it came to writing a handwritten note. Therefore, in 2017, he started his entrepreneurial journey when he launched simply noted. As the founder of the company, Elmore produced a proprietary technology which puts real pen and ink to paper to propel the creation of handwritten communication, which allows companies of all shapes and sizes to scale their unique marketing messages, and reach their ideal clients in a unique and personal way. And Elmore joined me this week to talk more about his athletic career, his time in sales, and how he's helping to restore the appeal of a handwritten note. I'm Kevin McShann. Let's have this conversation. Already, I'll take a moment to welcome you uh, to the program, and I'm super excited to learn all about your journey in business this afternoon. Great to see you, and uh, thanks so very much for being here. Sounds good. Excited to kick this off. Absolutely. Now, Rick, I wanted to start our conversation by you uh, just simply telling me about your business journey, how you got started, why you're passionate about it. And how you got to where you are today? Yeah, it's a great question. So my uh, my background is in athletics. I played college and professional sports. So I went to the University of Arizona on an athletic scholarship with my twin brother. Um, was pretty fortunate and had a good career there. I was a three year starter for Mike Stoops. Was uh, led the Pac-10 back then in multiple cat uh, stat categories from my junior and senior year. So. Um, was fortunate to then get drafted into the NFL in 2011, played for three years. Um, eventually, you know, the, that dream has to come to an end. I had to hang up my cleats and shoulder pads and get into the real world. And um, did what a lot of guys in my background do, get into sales because it's competitive, it's rewarding, it's challenging. You can use a lot of those skills that you've developed, you know, over the decades of being an athlete and uh, found a lot of success in my corporate career. Um, first year, I was Rookie of the Year for my branch. The next five years, it was either top 1% or top uh, five sales rep in my company. And then in 2017, I, you know, after having some success there, you know, there was just an itch I couldn't scratch. You know, I was searching for something else, searching for something bigger. I just felt like there was something else out there for me. 
And I went back and did my MBA in 2017. Uh, about a my program, I was in a, a marketing class, and I had a professor um, that was going through all the success rates in marketing, and everything was super nominal, you know, direct mail, uh, email, digital, social, um, cold calling, you know, everything was like single, single digit success. And then the, my professor ended the lecture saying, hey, guys, you know, it still works is a good old fashioned handwritten note. Um, it has a 99 percent open rate. So basically from that moment on, um, December of 2017, really started uh, going full speed at, at building my current business, um, simply noted. Uh, so it's been about five years. Backward since then, we have 11 full-time employees. Uh, we've developed our own handwriting robots, the world's only purposely built handwriting robot to do what it does. We've invested about $800,000 into that machine by itself. We should uh, buy for the 5000 this year. So yeah, business has been pretty good since uh, since starting. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, dive into Simply Noted because I know there's a pro 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 there's a there's a business advantage to it and a, a, a something that allows you to make money. So I'm I'm wondering if you can tell me about the art of the handwritten note and what makes the company uh, yeah. so spectacular. <laughs> great, great question. So. I mean, you know, we live in a digital age, you know, in 2000 and almost 23, um, the average person receives more than 4,000 digital notifications a month. Um, that's over 100 a day. Um, mail, phone calls, you know, text messages, social notifications, Twitter, whatever it may be. So everybody's super inundated with all this digital noise. You know, like sometimes I want to take my phone and I just want to throw it because it literally never stops going off. So, um, you know, with something that does stand out and work nowadays is a, is a good old-fashioned handwritten note. The average person receives less than seven handwritten notes a year. Um, it stands out in the mailbox. Nobody's competing in the mailbox anymore. And what Simply Noted does, um, we have our own handwriting robots that we built in-house or we build in-house. And we help companies either automate it based off of triggers in their CRMs or their payment platforms or whatever uh, software that they're using. So they can automate sending a thank you card, a birthday card, uh, anniversary card, or they can just scale it. So say if like a business had like 500 clients or 5,000 clients or a million clients and the CEO or, you know, somebody of influence wanted to send something really nice that was meaningful, we help businesses do that. Uh, fabulous. And, and you know, Rick, I'll share just a little bit about myself. I don't know how much research you did on me, buddy, but I was born with um, cerebral palsy, and the type of cerebral palsy I have doesn't allow me to walk normally because I don't have enough oxygen in my legs to walk normally. So one of my missions in life is to help businesses sort of scale their hiring of uh, folks with uh, disabilities. So I'm curious, where do you see... Uh, inclusion as as it relates to getting more people uh, with disabilities into the workforce? Yeah, it's a great question. I think our technology, um, you know, there's a lot of applications. You know, my, my father-in-law um, was a quadriplegic and he couldn't use his hands. And, um, you know, and he actually had a, an apparatus that he would put on his hand that would have a pen tied to it. So he would try to send handwritten notes. So what we you know, there's an application that these robots can help, um, you know, people with disabilities to send real handwritten notes as well. But yeah, um, you know, we use robots to do all the writing, but, um, you know, the robots need to be run by people. Um, so there's lots of opportunities, you know, from anyone with disabilities to um, people who are to start on their careers to come to Simply Noted and, and start their careers, you know, working with robots. Uh, fabulous. And Rick, as you know, scaling a business is not always easy. So I'm wondering if you have sort of three principles or a foundation of success that you think others can follow in order to scale a business. Yeah, so I think the, what's, what, what I, what's made our business success, successful is uh, my background in athletics, you know, all the 
transferable skills that was developed over decades of being an athlete, you know, working as a team, uh, dedication, passion, um, desire, perseverance, um, you know, having the strength to keep pushing forward, comp competition, um, you know, uh, excel, or, um, you know, competing, you know, on a national stage. So like high pressure situations. So that's why I like a lot of athletes like those sales jobs because they can kind of get a lot of that stuff there. But, um, yeah, we just basically, you know, took all those skills, you know, most of my, our, our team is ex at college, um, high school, you know, they played sports. Um, so that's really what helped us build a strong foundation, but for, you know, anybody who wants to start a business, um, there's a few things, you know, now me being an entrepreneur for five years, if I can go back is number one, you have to master patience and patience is an, an extreme skill that is really hard to master because everything's going to take a lot longer than you think. Um, you know, if you want something to happen in a year, it's probably going to take five years. If you want something to happen in five years, it's probably going to happen in like 10 or 15 or 20 years. It's just things take time. And then, um, you know, not getting in overhead because a lot of, a lot of people, um, you know, they, they try too much, they go too fast and before you know it, they get overwhelmed and, um, you know, uh, that's when people start to, to quit because they get overwhelmed. So yeah, I would say, uh, um, go slow, be patient. Don't try to rush for things. Don't, don't try to go super fast, get in over your head and, um, uh, you know, get overwhelmed because you're going to add a lot of stress and pressure to you, which will, you know, ultimately, you know, cause your business to fail. Yeah, everything in, in moderation and really find what it is your, is your niche, right? right? And not yeah. try to overextend yourself. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yep. You know, if you, you have to absolutely love it too. Um, you know, if you don't absolutely love you know what you're doing it, it's going to be really hard so like you said find a niche find something you're passionate about and, and you know if it feels like work if it feels like work every day it's going to be really hard to to grow a business um like you have to yeah i love it like you know, i mean i'm in our warehouse sometimes at 11 o'clock at night and i'm just watching these robots that we've built write notes and i'm still so passionate about it so it's really easy for me to work you know, 80 plus hour weeks because I'm just, I, I'm in love with the problem we're solving. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you brought it up a couple of times, brother. So I'm going to ask you, what's your favorite athletic memory and what do you uh, miss most about playing competitive sport? <laughs> so this is something a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of people get so focused on the goal, right? Like when I was 16, I wanted to be an NFL. I was always just laser focused. I'm going to be a professional athlete. But now, being removed from that, you know, what I really miss the most is just the journey, um, the working out every day, being in the locker room with the guys, competing um, at a high level, you know, a lot of it was the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and yeah, I do miss that a lot. So I'm trying to, you know, take what I've learned from that and uh, put it into what I'm doing here and simply noted. So um, I think the dream is the journey. And um, you know, the end goal is fun, but you have to love the journey because, again, that's the dream. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Rick, I know that uh, Simply Notice uh, Noted has grown exponentially since it uh, started. So tell me, what do you think is the key to really attracting your ideal client and business? And just tell me about the growth of the company and some of the clients that you're fortunate enough to uh, service because I know it's a wide range of people. Yes, uh, in creating a successful business, you have, a have to, you have to have a great culture. Um, and what we try to do here is uh, get people excited about the problem we're solving, but also um, we're developing our team every single day. Um, you know, we're helping them become better, learn new skills, um, because you know, simply not, it isn't going to be the only place that our team works at in their career. So we want to make sure that, you know, our team who comes or, you know, the people who come to be on our team, you know, they're getting everything that they can out of their experience here. So when they go on to, you know, whatever they do next, we've helped them become a better version of themselves to put them in a better situation in their next careers. Yeah. And, and Rick, tell me, I know that, uh, 
you, you, your experience in business has been wide ranging, and you have uh, plenty of uh, practical experience that has helped you in your current role. So tell me how practical and business experience are interconnected in your view. So I don't think they're. I don't think um, you know from being an athlete to you know being someone who's successful in business to just somebody who's successful and just say life building relationships. I think it's all interrelated. Um, there's certain pillars I think that that come along with you know success. You know, there's ones you have to master about yourself. There's ones you're going to have to master about people. There's going to be things you're going to have to master about business. Um, you know, so. I think uh, all those things that can be integrated can apply to anything that you're doing. So for like me, all my skills that I developed over decades of being an athlete, that was my, my, my personal skills that I worked on for a long time. Then in business, it's about being, you know, disciplined, you know, spending money, right. You know, building a product, having a vision, bringing on a team, you know, getting all the tools together. So like there's skills you're going to have to learn about, um, you know, running a business. And then a really hard thing, is you know learning how to work with people you know with like your clients like they're different people they have different wants different needs um and different personalities and they're going through different situations but you need them to work with you so your business works as well so i think um uh, you're gonna have to master certain things you know about yourself about your business about business tools or business tasks and also about people that are going to help you be successful no matter what you do yeah, and, and to that point, Rick, I'm, I'm curious, how do you think you've grown the most as a business leader? So this has been completely outside my own. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like a natural introvert or um, like I'm naturally conservative. So taking big risks, was something I, I, I was comfortable doing. So this has got me outside of my comfort zone and, and it's caused me to grow. Um, you know, growing a business is going to challenge you in every single way, mentally, emotionally, physically. Um, there's just so much responsibility on your shoulders, everything as a business owner, everything's your responsibility. Like if something doesn't go good, um, like you have to make sure that it's fixed. You, you do systems and processes and you train your team to improve it, but no one's going to do it besides you until you're like a you know, a, a 50 plus million dollar company and you have a big budget to pay people to solve your problems. But um, when you're starting out, um, it causes you to grow so much. And I tell people this, my five years in entrepreneurship is worth more than 40 years of experience in corporate America because I've had to solve so many problems, you know, learn how to build software, build robots, build websites, do SEO, accounting, billing, you know, um, taxes, payroll, like you have to do all these things that you never had to do. So yeah, I think entrepreneurship is a fantastic opportunity for anybody to have, you know, a lot of self-discovery and, and massive self-development. Yeah. Uh, sort of learning on the fly effectively, right? Yeah, you have to, <laughs> it's like, you have to learn on the fly. There's no time to sit down and, and wait for things to happen. You just have to make them happen as you go. Absolutely. And all right, I know you're based in Arizona, and I want to know, in your opinion, what makes Arizona a great place to do business? So I, I love Arizona. I'm from California, um, so I, I thought I'd always go back to California. That's where I grew up. And um, Phoenix is a great place to be. It's a massive city. There's a lot happening here, a lot of business. There's colleges, you know, restaurants. Um, you know, I think we're like the fifth or sixth largest city in the U.S., so it's a great place to be, you know, especially in like your young 20s, 30s, you know, even in your 40s. But um, you know, I'm, I'm an avid outdoorsman. I like camping, hiking, backpacking, hunting. And, you know, there's three awesome mountain towns, Prescott, Flagstaff, Pine Top. And it's a, you know, it's a really quick two-hour drive. So when, those, when the summer is 115 here or 120 degrees, we just escaped to the mountains to go up there where it's like 85. <laughs> it's still warm, but um, yeah, Arizona, I think it has it all. It really does. It's just, uh, you gotta, you gotta not mind the, you know, depressing 120 degree heat for, you know, four months out of the year. <laughs> you get used to dry heat, don't you, Rick? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And 363 plus days of sunshine.
have, well, uh, sad for you, buddy. I, I'm devastated for you that you could <laughs> clear away a, a full year of sunshine. No, I'm kidding. But, um, yeah. you know, the holiday, the holidays, Rick, are coming up. So I want to know what's on the top of your holiday wish list this year, my friend. You know, the older I get, now I have kids and family. Um, there really isn't. You know, I just want my kids and my family to be happy and healthy. Um, you know, your your wants and and desires change as you get older. Um, yeah, I just want everyone in my family and close friends that are close to me just to be happy and healthy. That's it. Um, because you know, especially a couple of years ago, a lot of the people are going through some of those COVID challenges. So yeah, I just want. Happy, healthy friends. That's all I mean. Well, well, I tell you, being a dad and a husband is uh, going to be uh, the most important job you ever have, right? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And Rick, my final question for you, buddy, has to do with your own personal and professional legacy and how you want that to be defined. You know, I want, and me and my wife talk about this all the time because me, my wife. Yeah. My wife's a super decorated, you know, athlete and business professional as well. Um, you know, we worked really hard to build our careers. We've had she she played she had two national championships in college and softball. She played on the Olympic team. She played professional. Um, you know, I, I've done some similar stuff as well, just not as decorated as her. She's in three Hall of Fames. Like she's like super decorated, and we, we don't want our legacy to be about that type of stuff. Um, what we want our legacy to be is, you know, to be the people that, you know, people wanted around, people that were loved, people that helped. Um, we really want to raise the, the bar in our family and just kind of set a new foundation and allow our kids to, you know, have better opportunities than we did. So we're just working really hard to, you know, make sure our kids are, number one, happy, healthy, they're provided for, and, uh, you know, we're a loving, happy resource for the ones that are close to us. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, Rick, tell me, if people want to get connected with you or uh, simply noted, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, it's a good question. I'm uh, on LinkedIn. That's usually where I'm at all day. Um, you can just go on there and look me up. It's Rick Elmore, E-L-M, as in Mary, O-R-E. Or just go to Simply Noted. Dot com. That's just how it's spelt. S as in Sam, I M as in Mary, P L Y noted.com. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, um, my company's website. Uh, fantastic. Well, Rick, as an old sports reporter, I uh, circled this one on my uh, calendar, but I want to wish you the very best in your uh, transition to business. And uh, when I uh, uh, talk to business people, I always tell them, them the main uh, time for personal time too, buddy, with the the year ending uh, take stock and what you've accomplished because it's uh, been quite the journey for you, buddy. I want to congratulate you and all you've accomplished and thank you for joining me today. It's most appreciated. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin, for the kind words and for allowing me to come on your show.